welcome to the Just Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. Sanzo. Oh my. <laughs> I got no idea what that means. So, <laughs> joining us today is Doterra. It was my destiny to... Wait, is that... was that in the script? No, wait, I don't think that was in the script. Where's my agent? You know, I, I had a very fun intro that I wanted to do, and I t- completely derped and forgot because I used the pre-installed script in my head, you know, the one that I always say. But the intro would be, Hello, my name is Norman Sanzo, and you are listening to the MBS show. Now, prepare to be entertained. I was about to say, is it, did I kill your father? <laughs> I didn't mean to kill your father. No, no. I'm sorry, Norman, I didn't mean to kill your father. <laughs> no, no. But anywho, um... In today's episode, we are going to review the My Little Pony comic, issue 66. And in this comic, Twilight Sparkle and her friends discover that a film is being made about them. Ooh, will we see them be involved in some action-packed adventure, or uh, test their friendship, or travel the land to a faraway place to see some hippogriffs or some cat people or whatever it is? Yeah, that'll be the future. Yeah. Well, there's one thing I gotta say, though. You say Twilight and her friends, but Twilight doesn't even appear in this comic. <laughs> she Do you? She does not. It is false advertising. Do you doubt the synopsis in the wiki page? <laughs> well, I mean, the only yes. time she appears is at the cover. Ah, <laughs> uh, true that, Because folks. I trust my eyes. True that, folks. My eye is Norman. You gotta open up your eyes. <laughs> And get the woogly eyes. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm, yes. So, anywho, before we head in, let's get into first impressions. Silver. Bit of a snore fest, this, I'm afraid. Uh, there's, n- there's not a lot of substance here. Each character doing what they like, and sometimes it's, it's funny, but it's a lot of setup for just the third act. And not a whole lot of, well, anything in between. I mean, uh, Wormer Horsehooves, the director, he doesn't even have a role in all this. There's a fun element of uh, watching the ponies, watching the behind the scenes, seeing how ponies dress up to try and look like the main six in a black and white photo. But it's all spectacle and no substance. A bit like Hollywood. Ah, ah, ah. D- yeah. I believe that's shots fired. Ah! <laughs> Take cover. But anywho, um, Tara, what about you? I'm gonna have to kind of be on the same boat as Silver. Not really, like I read, I read this while having breakfast one day, and it it could have been me being tired. But at the beginning, I was kind of yawning because it didn't really caught my attention. Then at later on, at the third act, that's when you know it started getting somewhere. So it's not really the greatest in my opinion, but it was decent. Agreed, agreed. And as for me, this comic is bland. It's not the good kind of blend too. It's it's a lot of uh, how do I put this? It's like they re- they were using the same formula, but they were using it poorly. And the thing is, art is awesome, coloring is awesome, story is, eh. It's one of those uh, how do I put this? It's not a amazing read. It's a fun read, but it's not awesomeness but anywho those are first impressions so let's get right into it if you have an interest in reading this comic pause here welcome back i hope you enjoy the comic and well if you have your opinions do write it down in the comments below so we start off with our heroes having breakfast at twilight's castle it's breakfast or tea. Without Twilight. I know, I know. So Without Twilight. Ah, yes. Here's the thing. Um, This comic is being published or is taking place after the movie and where Twilight has her school. Yes, so that's the time frame for this one. But why are they having tea in the Princess of Friendship's castle without the Princess of Friendship? Well, it could kind be of one. breaking an entry, don't you think? Not really. It could be. One I mean, of... that's like <laughs> that'd be like me going going into the White House and helping myself to the food, and not seeing the president or anyone else. But are you best friends with the president? No, I'd totally be down for that. 
enjoy the White House without the president? Oh, <laughs> sign me up. Yeah, but if you're the president's friend, like you have a pass, like yeah, why not, right? But wouldn't that be weird as can be? But in my mind, like this, what happening now here is the teachers are done with school and they all meet up at Twilight Space to do parties and whatever it is for later. That's what I think about it. I don't know. It, it's weird. Yeah. It's very weird. Okay, Torterra technically told a lie. Was it? Technically. Twilight is in this comic. She's in the she's in the photo on the cover of the newspaper. That it doesn't holds count. Up. Yeah, it totally counts. Yeah, if you look at the week, it totes counts. Yeah, if you look but at it's the not wiki. colored. Well, that could be an imposter. No, no. If you look at the wiki for appearances in the show, they always take oh, this character is has appeared in the show, but background. <laughs> well, now Twilight's a background pony. Oh, take that. Now, Applejack's in the limelight. Woo! It's like, I was tired of that joke before it was even a thing. <laughs> well, just saying, now we know Torterra's filthy, filthy lies. <laughs> that hurts. Uh... I would never lie. Oh, that itself is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had name one time where I lied. Torterra used lie mode. It wasn't very effective. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, but anywho, we... Start off with Rarity busting in the door, stating that, Yo, gang, look, uh, tabloids, um, Twilight's book is going to be a movie. Woo! That's awesome. Yeah! That means we're going to be, um, whatchamacallit, the celebrities. Yeah! So, that's awesome and whatnot. And here, Applejack says, A movie? They're making a real Magic Lantern show about us? And... That's very interesting. Magic Lantern show. What? Okay, I, I missed this on the first go, but we're used to seeing My Little Pony use silent films and uh, or a soundtrack mm -hmm. uh, for their movies in black and white. Magic Lanterns are still images with narration. We briefly see the process as they go, actually go to Applewood. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> uh, let's just say that there's a lot of uh, inconsistency with this one and we'll point them out when we notice them especially when we notice them so anywho uh, Rarity says like yo girls let's take a road trip to Applewood so they do and they arrive in Applewood Yay. that was fast Applewood da, 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 da. and I have to say uh, Rainbow Dash here looks awesome with her bomber jacket and aviator glasses. Yeah, she doesn't wear those very often. Bomber jacket or the aviator glasses, or both of them at the same time. Well, both, but mostly the jacket. Yeah, does she have it? All Wonderbolts have a have a flight jacket. Ah, okay. She's yeah, on her way right. to the danger zone. Oh, Rainbow, Rainbow, danger zone. Oh well, I can't wait for that volleyball scene. <laughs> <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo! So, anywho, uh, they arrive and they are ecstatic because this is their first time there and they got no idea what to do. And Flutter Chai just do, does an offhand comment about, it's a shame Twilight couldn't make it since she's so busy with the school. Yay! School stuff. Woo! Yeah. School stuff without any teachers. <laughs> at all. Oh, yeah. Poor Twilight. There's Twilight. Yep. And Starlight. Oh, wow. And Starlight wasn't invited. Yep. <laughs> but still, um, this is kind of cool. We get to see Pinky wanting to get some autographs and stuff. Like, yeah, this is cool. This is cool. So they go to the premise, show their pass, and visit the lot. And it's kind of interesting seeing how the background works for movies and whatnot. And they meet the director of the movie. And yeah, so uh, this is how they do the, what was it called again? Magic, yeah, uh, Lantern Show. Magic Lantern. Magic Lantern Show. And the way they do, do this is they take a picture and cut. They take lots of pictures. And yet they called for breaks rather quickly. This this seems, compared to actual 
acting and mo- motion pictures, this seems pretty tame. Mm-hmm. And the the thing is, um, the 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 way that they do this is, uh, they put on a wig, they step on some fake cutie marks, and play the actor. At first, I was thinking like, wait, what? This is not right. Until I understand the concept of uh, Lantern Show, and yeah, this just <laughs> this pops a lot of questions in my head. And do we want to tackle this now or later? A list of what they do? No, I mean, or there's the, so it, much wrongness in this one. Like, why do a Lantern show when they already established that they have film or movies? Maybe some people like the classical stuff? It might be just a decision by Wormer Horsehooves, the director of this project. He's saying he wants to have this cinema, cinema verite, or uh, I believe that's French for truthful... Let's see here. Truthful cinema. Hmm. He wants it to be authentic. So maybe he feels that motion pictures can't get the true essence while a still frame can. A picture is worth a thousand words or some other bull plop. I doubt that, but still. Well, if you think about it, actually, every director is different. Like some directors like stop motions, some like nothing but CGI's, and some like having stuff in front of the actual camera. Some just like money. Hi, Michael Bay. <laughs> and yeah, or some like just like explosions. Or some like to insert themselves. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. How's your sex life? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But anywho. But anywho. As we carry on, we get to see the director. And he seems very tired. Very, very tired. And if I'm not mistaken, he hands over directing to the five of them. Like the five friends like um rarity and her friends and he says that an epic friendship director by the ponies who lived it is a brilliant yay and yeah so this director's trash <laughs> it's true yeah i think he just realizes that this is do- dead on arrival and so he's looking for the easiest way to pass the buck oh yeah get oh. it <laughs> oh, wow <laughs> oh. Yeah, but because horse puns. Yeah, but it's a joke, son. <laughs> you can laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, yes, uh, Rarity accepts it, and the five of them are excited to direct the movie, and especially Fluttershy. She looks so cute. But th- this is a point where the humor actually undermines it a little. Oh, okay. Applejack says, "Sure, I don't have anything planned for the next couple months." Oh wow! Th- you are a teacher at a school. You should be at said school right now. <laughs> yep. Twilight's off in the distance going, what the hey? <laughs> That's why she's busy. Because all her fellow teachers are just off and about. It's like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, man. But, okay, here's where, oh, my God. Um, okay, we go to the next day. They start directing and they start making the movie. And here's the concept where, <laughs> sorry, here's where I don't understand this concept about Magic lanterns or just using this kind of way of storytelling is kind of silly. I mean, oh man, what's a good example? You remember back in the days of the Sega CD where plumbers don't wear ties? Remember that? I think the Angry Video Game Nerd reviewed that one before. I uh, can't say I've seen that one. I don't recall ever remembering or seeing that. So anywho, um, it's uh, it, it's a still I, I forgot, but the way that they did it is still pictures with voiceovers acting the well magic lantern thing, but it felt so cheap. It felt so cheap that they did this, and I'm not hundred percent sure how they did it in the olden days. But once you know that there's what you call this, there's filmography. Or filmmaking here in uh, what you might call this in Equestria, going back to this seems like a step back. You know what I mean? Mm. So do you mean cinematography? Yes, thank you. Cinematography. I get what you're saying. I I kind of like the humor of just everyone sitting wrapped watching still images. Uh, I guess. I mean, there's <laughs> the what plays are still a thing. Like, the theaters and whatnot is still a thing. So, it's not 
rare. It, but to me, it just feels like so strange. Like they're going for this approach. Well, we're all a little strange. The main five changed the script on them just to make things much more positive for them and whatnot. And they have a... Well, they, they fight with each other not agreeing on stuff. So, in the end, all of the other five split up to do their own thing and take the cast and crew away. Even Fluttershy, she's pissed. Well, yeah, I mean, she wants her time in the spotlight too. Never underestimate the shy one. Yeah, true. Those are the dangerous the ones. The shy ones you gotta watch out for. By the way... Uh, Stay out of my shed. <laughs> oh, God, no. oh, my God. But by the way, uh, if you take a look, see, at the... Uh, at them leaving and taking their cast and crew away, uh, did oh man, who who was the guy that drew this comic? Uh, Anderson, yeah, Ted Anderson. Did Ted Anderson insert himself in the comic? Well, first off, Tony Fleet Fleet did the artwork. Ah, sorry, Ted Anderson is the is the writer. Yeah, sorry, Tony Fleet. So, uh, let's see here. It's the scene where all of them are leaving, and he's going with Rarity. Yep, he's with Rarity. <laughs> All righty then. They like to do that. Yep, yep. They're nuts. So, okay, anywho. Okay, uh, that was kind of fast because substance is not a strong point in this comic. So, Silver, you mentioned something about, uh, what you call this? Doing our favorites? Yeah, well, basically after a very short montage of production, we are at opening night as they all sit together. And they're going to watch each other's uh, work. So I thought it'd be just to poll. What's your favorite of the main six's self-indulgent stories? Uh-huh. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, I like rarities. It, it looks cool. Mm-hmm. That's about it. Torterra, do you have a favorite? Not necessarily. Does one stand out to you? I guess Applejack's. Why? Well, I mean... Like, she's the protective pony villain. Like, you see her with um, all these creatures. Like, how could I say this? She's basically like um, a hardcore Snow White, as you would say. A hardcore Snow White with, with creatures? I, wait, I'm, that's... I'm remembering this shy. differently. So, wait. Oh, wait, no. Maybe I'm getting mixed up. I don't... I'm... At first, yeah, Applejack does describe herself as a stalwart protector... Silent Guardian, she takes on Paris sprites and oh, chases it, right. cattle. Right. I'm probably getting mixed up with something else. Yeah. Fluttershy's movie only lasts one panel. Uh-huh, yes. Uh-huh. And by the way, uh, did Rarity extend her story? Because I'm looking at the one where there's a unicorn holding a rose in her mouth. Is that Rarity's? A rose in her mouth. Is, it, is that the when they're recording? After Pinky's film. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that's Pinky's film. Wait, the one what? with the rose and the hood. Oh, okay. Wow, that's a tonal shift. Uh, no, the pony with the rose in her teeth is still Pinky's. Okay, yeah, th- that's a tonal shift. But anywho, yeah, like I mentioned before, mine is rarity because of the whole um, Dick Tracy aesthetics. That That's always cool. I like it. And Terra is Applejack because of superhero? Yes, Applejacks, yes. And what about, you, Sil- <laughs> what about you, Silver? What about Silver? Well, part of me liked that everyone expected Applejacks to be a Western. So when she does the superhero, <laughs> the mis- Mistress Marvelous, she's like, a gal can like two things. <laughs> but in the interest of keeping this diverse, I liked, I think, a Rainbow Dash. Oh, yeah. Because... The title of her her uh, magic lantern so- show should be my uh, friendship is bomb. <laughs> my oh, voice, yeah. So anywho, um, let's go. The odd. Aud- <laughs> I mean, I, I keep expecting that that Tiny Toons moment. Thud. <laughs> the audience is now deaf, <laughs> and the expressions on all of them, like Rainbow smiling happily, and everyone else is like ah, popcorn flying and stuff. Yeah, everybody's shocked. And everybody's shocked, and Rainbow is just eating up the fact that she, uh, she's the greatest, most fastest, most wonderful yep. pony. Whew. I just, wow. All right, so let's break it down for a bit for the audience at home. Uh, 
So there's a narrator on stage, there's a live band, and they play to the picture, which is kind of cool when you think about it. So narrator tells the story about the movie and stuff. So we got Rainbow Dash, she's egotistical because she's retelling the scene where she saved Rarity from the flying competition, season one. Then Pinkie Pie tells a story about um, the time where she went crazy. Remember that one? Season one. Then somehow it turned into the Pony of Shadows? What? This... Wait, it's the next page, like pony shat. It's the pony with the rose on the mouth. Like, uh, I I still don't get it. It's still Pinky's video or Pinky's movie, and I'm just I'm just reading here. Like, let Juggle teach us the way of scissors, and Pinky says it's just symbolic. Like, what? I that's the point, though. It's 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 non sequitur. It's funny because we don't have a bloody clue what yeah. it is. It's meant to build tension, and you just laugh yeah, it away. True, yeah, true. Yeah. But in, like how they mention a silver candle instead of a silver quill. <laughs> Treachery, most <laughs> ah, puns. And then uh, we get to see the next scene, uh, scene three, the Celestial Falcon. And this one, oh wow. Uh, does, does anybody remember which this, like what's this one referring to? Oh, well, I, I know the Maltese Falcon. Uh-huh. Uh, yes, I, I I cannot talk about your certain illegal <laughs> activities. Basically, it's a noir film style. I love that that while it looks like the main six, they've added little patches and tape to remind us, hey, those Q marks are pasted yeah. on. <laughs> uh, kind of cute. Uh, because they're actors, you know? But I don't get it. It's like, uh, does, does anybody yes. remember what scene this is? Because I'm trying to remember, and the only time I remember where Rarity was a detective is when... She was with Rainbow Dash. And this one is not. She's interrogating Fluttershy. Well, no, this isn't her trying to reenact a scene from her actual history. It's just her to make it a story. Uh, they they abandoned they abandoned truth in in this film long ago. Mm. In fact, I do love they say, no pony is that innocent. <laughs> Fluttershy's <is> like, I <laughs> am. <laughs> okay, so basically... Are you, though, Fluttershy? I don't think you're as innocent as you want everyone to think you are. So basically, Rarity told her, well, she, she diverted from her story. All right. Then, well, Fluttershy, Fluttershy is okay because it's a retelling of Winter Wrap-Up, best episode ever, with best song ever. Well, just the, I think it's just an animal documentary. I don't think they even mention Winter No, they don't. Uh, oh, when, when spring arrives, uh, you're right, you're right. So, but it's from the animal's point of view. <laughs> And then so it's kind of like Animal Planet. <laughs> oh, and she flat out says Twilight's friendship problem wasn't important during the winter. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, okay, and last but not least, it's a mashup of Applejack's fantasy and whatnot. And in the end, the director is kind of peeved that he gave responsibility to um, the five of them, and in the end. Everybody thinks it was a joke and a gag, and they all laugh. And uh, yay! So that's uh, I don't. I'm get. I'm getting actually. Uh, the showstoppers vibe oh, the here. Showstoppers. We showing us that again? Oh yeah! Now that you mention it, yeah, it's kind of like that almost. It's the quick and easy resolution. Yeah. But anywho, uh, they all laugh. They all had a good time, which is good. And they thought it was a comedy, and then everybody, all the five of them, get off stage and have a jaunty talk about never being in the industry again and stuff. And yeah, let's just say episode ends. Yay! <laughs> so, wow, you could hear the excitement in Norman's <laughs> voice. It's like, hey, so, yeah, let's yeah, let's get so let's get to final thoughts. Silver, my man, what do you think? Well, there's just not a lot here to, to talk about. Every, it's sort of that classic unreliable narrator. Everybody remembers things a little differently, especially if it benefit if it makes them look good. Yeah, true, true. It's what we do. Which is kind of cool and understandable, but I feel like this one, like, oh man. Anyway, before I say my thoughts, uh, anything more, Silva? Well, just that 
it has fun little moments of comedy, these little bursts, but kind of li- light on substance. Yeah, I feel that too. I feel that too. But at least we get the world premiere of Princess Diary. <laughs> Better than the actual Princess Diary. Hey, 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 which one? Which one? Well, definitely the second. I never really saw the, the first. The Princess Diary. Oh, and I haven't seen any of it. reviewed it, right? No, I don't the think Princess did. Diary. Are you sure? You're talking about the Princess oh, yeah, Bride? Yeah, the Princess Bride. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, was, there's the... a difference between a bride and diaries. My bad. It's actually very exceptional to say Princess Bride, Mowage. <laughs> Mowage is what brings us oh together. Uh, is that all syllable? Mowage <laughs> is my bride job. Okay, uh, I'm good. Tara, what about you? I mean, I don't really have much to say for this. I, like, not. I mean, I like how they went to a new place, Applewood. I mean, I thought they were going to make a pun out of it and maybe call it Ponywood or something, but that'd obviously be speciesist. Yeah. And, you know, Applewood, I mean, I guess that works. <laughs> but this comic's okay. That's all I really got. Not much to talk about this. Yeah, understandable. At least in my opinion. Understandable. And. In all honesty, for me, if I were to rank this comic, uh, it's 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 a pass. <sighs> Hate to say that, but it's lack of substance. Like how do I put this? You're paying four dollars for this comic, and getting this, I would say that it's kind of a robbery. It's eh, not great. It's meh, and I hate doing that. Like I I hate giving bad reviews to something I enjoy. Sorry, um, a brand that I enjoy. But for this one, I just have to tell it as it is, man. It is not great. The fun part of this one is the slapstick comedy. Some of it, if there's available. And the quote-unquote movie is fun. But in the end, it's all kind of bland. Like, there's nothing to be excited about and well uh, I don't know what to say like knowing that movies are available in Equestria and them taking this very traditional form of movie making kind of begs the question of why and with what you call this um, with the potential of telling a story for this one they could have done multiple ways of stories like okay i do appreciate that they told it in their own ways but i would like it if they just take a story from the comics instead and at least there'll be more variety and people will be asking oh what is this from where where did this came about and they'll say oh this is from the comics oh i got to check that one out but this one is just like eh i guess i go watch the episode for this story speaks on eh, sorry to sound a bit negative i mean the one thing i kind of like about the comic is the references on when they make it to applewood and you got daring do on the bottom you got sapphire heart song i mean sapphire shore is up over there and <laughs> color mature and then at the last page when they end the comic they have one that says the end yeah <laughs> yeah i wonder who that is oh uh, uh oh it's a common writer Oh, oh, I see. Kamen. <laughs> uh, I wonder how he's doing. <laughs> Kamen Rider, the end though. <laughs> uh, boys. But anywho, uh, silver, silver, silver. What are we going to do next week? Well, I think it's time for a return to the show. We have a heist to plan. Oh. Ooh. We a heist in honor of the voice actresses who stole our hearts. Oh, much awesomeness. So, to come back next week as we discuss Sparkle 7. Oh, wow. Yes. This this is going to be awesome. I can't wait. And here's the thing, ladies. Yep. Here's the thing, ladies and gents. This is going to be episode 200. We've been following this show for this long that we got 200 episodes of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Ain't that a blast? God, we are so old. Man. <laughs> Especially silver. Me! <laughs> so, anywho, um, join us next week for Season 9, Episode 4, overall Episode 200, as we review The Sparkle 7. Yes, I can't wait to... Cause I, I just can't wait, guys. Like, if we have time, we would have just recorded this next. You know what? Don't even record. We just got to talk about it. But, nah, man. 
Uh, we have things to do. Not even in the script. Be life in water. Yep. No. Uh, so anywho. So anywho. Uh, so anywho. What was I again? Yes. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at emisogmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at Emilia Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on Le Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. Use the same to find me on DeviantArt, where I post Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight the night before each new episode. Or special, as the case may be. Uh, you can find me on YouTube. Just do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact, and I shall appear. And you can find me on Equestria Daily every Wednesday with a comic review or editorial. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can easily find me on Facebook, DeviantArt Twitter, or Facebook. Wait, did I say Facebook twice? Yes. Uh, indeed. Curses. Oh, they can find me on Facebook. You're double booked. <laughs> I did. <laughs> they can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortera1324. Easy as one, two, three. Yay! You mean one, two, three, four? No, one, three, two, four. <laughs> it is no longer easy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, also please subscribe to radio on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch radio and also and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLife.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also myself. Like, thank you so much, guys. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia Vecquil. I am the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. And cut. That's a wrap. Yay! Now I can take off this mask! You mean you're not Norman Sanzo? Nah, I am the soul of the... Something, something, something. I, I don't know. <laughs> something, something, dark side, young Skywalker. Something, <laughs> something. Oh, or better yet, you could be the soul of a child in a tree stump because Pokemon's for kids. Now, to be to be for, to be more specific, it, they only possess it if children died while lost in the forest. There's a difference. Oh, that makes everything better. Well, golly gee, I don't know why I was upset at the beginning. Oh wait, yes I do, cause you're sick. Ladies and gentlemen, Silver Quill. <laughs> <laughs>